quick lesson, all right? So the toes to bar. Ideally, what we want, what I assume everyone wants to be able to do at some point is a set of unbroken toes to bar. So that means being able to touch my toes and string them together very easily, or at least try to make them look easy. Oftentimes what I see and what you'll see actually some other coaches, maybe a purist in the gymnastics gym, will try to teach you to do toes to bar like this, where you're perfectly straight, you try to keep your legs totally straight and extended. And for some people that might work, but the way I'm gonna teach today is my personal favorite way of doing it, and that's the tuck and flick method. So simply, instead of legs fully extended like this, I want you to actually tuck your knees and just tap your toes to the bar, okay? The reason I do that, one, is because I think it's a little bit easier to develop, and two, which one of these movements is easier? Movement one, okay, is that easier or is that easier? Movement two, which one? Two. Two is much, much easier. So if I'm going to spend a lot of time swinging in and out of that, I would much rather fatigue my core less and tuck my knees. The farther your feet get away from your body, the straighter your legs are. I'm telling you right now, it's going to fatigue your core a lot more quickly. Yeah, sure, you're not going to look as pretty, but that doesn't really matter. What we're looking for here is efficiency, and I personally think the tuck method works a lot. So when I say tuck and flick, there's a couple different steps of the toes to bar. And when we go into the actual wad today, the practice session, that's what I'm going to go through. I'm going to teach you a couple of these different things. So when I do a toes to bar, what I'm thinking about is not just let's touch my toes to the bar. There's a couple different steps. The first thing that we're going to do is I need to activate my, I need to activate my, my lats, my shoulders, my chest, in order to get my body back behind the bar so that I'm making room for my legs to come up and actually touch this bar. If you just hang from the bar and say, all right, I'm gonna touch my toes to the bar now, and you just lift your toes up and then bring them down, what happens is you get this, this swinging effect. This is called the death swing or the Tarzan swing depending on what you want to call it. But all it means is all you're focusing on is taking your toes and touching the bar, but you're not doing anything else. What happens is that it's impossible to kip when you do that, okay? So for those of you who can do a few reps, do you ever have any extra swings that you dangle in there? Yeah? So what I want everyone to learn today is to make sure that whenever we're doing a toes to bar, the very first step is not lifting my feet. The very first step is to get my body out of the way. Okay, so since everyone's kind of like over here-ish, like if this is the vertical, the vertical bar, I don't want to just lift my toes to this bar. I'm trying to get my body back and out of the way, and then I have room to lift my feet to the bar. Okay, so the very first step of the toes to bar is here. Okay, that's what I call the lever or lever. I don't really know which one's right. The lever, the lever position. So I'm, I'm levering my shoulders back. I'm trying to pull the bar down, and you'll feel it when we practice this. You're going to feel it in your lats right here. You're going to feel it in your shoulder. And a lot of times when you're done doing toes of bar, your chest will actually be really sore, believe it or not. There's a lot of pecs involved. So first step is pull down on the bar to make room for the rest, okay? So that's like first step. The second step in the tuck and flick method is simply tucking your knees. So when I lever myself back, the next thing is just lever back, tuck. Okay, so I'm, I'm making room, and then I'm bringing my feet and my legs up where they need to be. So lever back, tuck. Okay, we're going to do a bunch of singles of those a little bit later. From here, again, what's the first step? Lever, and then the second step, tuck. Okay, the last step, and I know this is a very simplistic way of teaching it, but it does work. The last step is simply flicking my toes to the bar. Now, when we start practicing this, some of you are gonna look like this. Okay, <laughs> and it's not, gonna, it's not gonna quite be there, and that's okay. One thing I want everyone to learn, and we're gonna, we're gonna practice a couple different drills that you can, you can use to, I guess, navigate around this, is even if your toes don't get all the way to the bar, it's okay, especially during practice. 
just like when, like let's say we're trying to first learn how to squat. All right, if you're trying to teach one, someone to learn how to squat, you don't have to make them squat all the way down right from the beginning, right? So you're gonna be like, hey, let's, let's go down halfway. All right, let's go a little bit deeper. Okay, let's go a little bit deeper. The same thing applies for the toes to bar. I'm not gonna say, hey, you need to get your toes all the way to the bar right away. I'd rather see you have perfect positioning and do something that you know, looks something like that, but you can keep your kip and you're still, getting, you're still working all the same muscles. You just might not be hitting it to RX standard yet. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. So, I talked about how it's okay to tuck and flick and not quite get the height that you want. A great way that you can navigate around this is by adding a target. So you can take a pair of J-hooks and put a band across it. An even better version, if you happen to have the equipment, is to take a squat rack and bring it over and put it in front of the bar that you're hanging from and then you can adjust where the bands are and keep the band a little bit farther out here. Because you'll see, having this so close is a little annoying because my face is gonna hit it. But ultimately, if this was at the correct height, like if I had a little bit more height here, I could do my full kip, and all I'm gonna do every time is focus on hitting my shins to this band. So what that does is that gives you like a tactile cue that says, I touched, I touched, I touched. Because a lot of times if people are like, oh, I'm just gonna scale down, their first rep will be here, their second rep will be here, and they think they're doing the same thing. So here, it's, all we're doing is we're basically scaling down the range of motion of the toes to bar. Okay, so a few of you, when we go to the wad, we're gonna practice that. One of the most common faults that people make is that when they do a toes to bar, or really anything hanging from the pull-up bar, they come under the bar, they start here, and then they go, and they have no momentum. And they do some of these, maybe some of these, some of these, they're probably jumping off the bar, and then they're like, all right, I'm ready. I'm ready, and toes the bar, okay? They've already done 15, 20 swings, right? Hands are burned up, wasted a lot of energy, my forearms are, are shot. You wasted so much energy there. One of the biggest things you can do, this applies to, to kipping pull-ups, to butterfly pull-ups, to bar muscle-ups, especially to toes the bar, is what I call the hollow hop in. So rather than coming to the bar and just and having no momentum, what I want you to do is I actually want you to jump and start in that kind of levered position. And then what you're gonna do is swing into your kip and then miraculously you're gonna notice you're gonna have way more momentum for that first official rep, okay? So again, this is the bad version you know, flop like a fish until you can get high enough. This is the better version. I jump up, I'm slightly behind the bar, I jump up into a hollow position, and then I can jump right into it. It's kind of subtle, but you have a lot more momentum. So again, I'm slightly behind the bar, I jump up, you'll notice I'm in that hollow position. I'm in the same position that I told you to swing to, to lever to. I'm starting, shoulders back, feet forward, drop into that first rep and you'll have so much more momentum. So everyone who's at zero or like maybe getting one, if, if we can do one thing today, it's learn how to hop into the first rep so that you always get the first rep. When you're doing a toes to bar, very, very common mistake that many of you will probably still make even though I'm telling you about it now, is for whatever reason, when people are kipping, they want to look straight down at the ground. So if I'm here, and I'm trying to do a toes to bar and I'm just like this kipping and I just can't get, my, can't get my feet up to the bar. One of the easiest things that you can do is simply look up. I'm not looking up like this. I'm just simply letting my chin come up and making space for my legs to get up towards the bar. So what I'm trying to do is remember how I lever myself back Okay, the same exact thing applies to my head. If I, lever, if I lever my shoulders back, but my head stays forward, that's not helping anybody. I physically can't get my feet up towards the bar. However, if I just simply lift my chin up, I have so much more space. So like, here's an actual example. And I know it's gonna look like I'm faking it, but me keeping my chin down, that's as high as I can get my toes. If I keep my chin down, I literally can't, I'm trying to get my chin to the bar, or my toes to the bar and I can't do it, okay? But as soon as I let my chin come up, easy, 
Okay? It makes a huge difference. The thing that we're going to do is a nine minute EMOM. This isn't a workout to get you tired. This is simply a workout to expose you to the different levels of toes to bar. But what we're going to do is minute number one, three, two, one, go. It's going to be five beat swings. So all that is, that's five kip swings. So you're going to practice. Remember, what are we going to do? How do we start? Jump into a hollow. I heard some other murmurs, but I, I assume all of you said that. Okay, so jump into a hollow position. So I'm going to jump up and then one, two, three, four, five. Okay, if I can see that, that's great. For everyone who has, let's say, like one toes of bar or zero toes of bar, that was five unbroken beat swings. I don't necessarily care if you can do that yet. I'd rather actually see you do this. Jump up, big swing, back. One, and then do it again. And practice jumping into that hollow every time, okay? I'd rather see that, especially if you don't have multiple toes of bar yet. Next, then we're gonna hop into the next minute, we're just adding a little bit more complexity. So rather than just the beat swing, now we're gonna swing and tuck our knees. So you're gonna tuck your knees as high as you possibly can. So that means I'm gonna jump in, hollow, tuck, then you can drop. Or if you're someone who's trying to learn multiples, if you're trying to learn like multiples unbroken, then you're gonna hop in hollow, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's it. The last thing, so you're gonna have plenty of time to rest. And then the last minute, we're gonna try to string it all together and knock out some toes to bar. So I secretly said swing, tuck, flick, but really this is toes to bar, okay? <laughs> I know, it's amazing. But I don't actually care if your toes touch the bar. Remember, I want you to jump into a hollow, swing, tuck, flick, okay? If it looks like that, that's fine. Or if you're someone who's trying to st string it together, it's gonna need a little bit more swing. So look, I'm swinging, tucking, flicking, swinging, tucking, flicking, okay? There's two main problems I'm seeing, okay? So problem number one, the difference between singles and multiples is, has been a struggle, that's okay. So when I say, when I say singles, um, so if you do not have multiple toes to bar, so if you, if you can't do this, all right, where I'm touching the bar every time, if you can't do that, then I don't want you hopping on the bar and doing this, right? Because we're not helping anything. What we need to do before we move, before you run, right, you need to crawl, and then you need to walk, and then splat, and then, and then eventually it turns into running, okay? So what we need to do is I want to actually work on everybody hopping into that first rep. Once we can nail that, we're going to work on just trying to swing our toes to really, really crush that first rep, okay, to nail it. And the reason is because, like, who did the CrossFit Open this past year? Anyone? Few? Okay. So in the CrossFit Open, what's crazy is that, like, that's a lot of times where we, like, measure our fitness. That's where we measure our abilities. Oftentimes, one of the biggest tips that I give people is to do single reps. And I know it's crazy because you want to do a whole bunch of reps unbroken and, like, look really cool. But one of the most efficient and effective ways to do toes to bar and never get tired is to go like this and relax. You jump up and you relax, right? Matt, have you tried those? Have you done those? Yeah, and they work, okay? It's amazing how efficient jumping into just one rep is. So I think that's what I really want to focus on. Because we have so many people who are just trying to get that first rep, really want to practice that. Um, so practicing one rep is a very major key. And then just like when I earlier in the class I talked about levering those shoulders back, that is definitely very difficult for some of you. And that's okay, that's to be expected. So while I don't think, we can't necessarily develop strength today, right? Now, obviously we can't develop strength in a one hour period. But what I really want you to focus on as we move on to this next section of just kind of playing around, I'm gonna set a couple lower toes to bar targets. So what we'll be able to do is, is everyone will kind of be able to play with trying to do toes to bar to a shorter target and I'll make sure that I get eyes on each and every one of you. But for especially the ladies, just because upper body strength tends to not be as strong, okay? That's not sexist, it's just, it's a, it's a fact. When, if you guys don't have the lat strength to really pull down on the bar and do like 
right? That, that's called, that's a true like gymnastics lever. If you can't do that, then it's gonna be really hard to get your toes up because you're just kind of dangling from the bar. So what I really want you to focus on as we're practicing that hollow hop in is really pull on the bar, right? So one big pull down. It's almost like if you guys remember going to a Globo gym, you remember the lat pull down? We have like lat pull downs and then some of you might have done straight arm lat pull downs. Well, that's what this is. This is literally a straight arm lat pull down. Okay, I'm pulling down on the bar. My arms are basically completely straight. If you can get strong there, you'll crush it, okay? And I actually will show you guys a couple, actually I'll show you right now. This is like a super simple developmental drill that we have like inside of our uh, toes to bar program. If people aren't strong enough to lever themselves back, we will literally have them take a band like this and just practice straight arm pull downs, right? And you do, you know, sets of 10 at a heavy-ish weight or a heavy band and you'll feel it all right here. Okay, all these muscles that never really get worked out. So, here's what we're gonna do. What time we got here? I wanna make sure I get eyes on each one of you. All right, 7.50, we're good. So, I am going to set up a lower toes of our target. Obviously, we have all these high bars. What I want everyone to do is when I come to you, we're gonna practice sets of singles. So again, that's like, all right, I walk up to you and be like, show me what you got. I want you to show me to start just one really good single rep, as high as you can get your feet for that one rep, okay? And then, depending on how that goes, we might work up a little bit higher. For those of you who can't get your toes even close, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this squat rack and I'm gonna position it in front of your bar and set a new target, so you don't have to quite get all the way to the bar. This is gonna be your toes to bar target. Thank you, thank you, okay. So like if I was on this bar right here, okay, this can now, boom, boom. That's gonna be your toes to bar target, okay? And then as you, as you feel better and better and better with that, we'll raise it up and then eventually we can put it on the bar, like right here, hanging across here, and then eventually you'll be able to touch, okay? And that's a great progression that you can do, especially if you guys know you have toes to bar on the workout. If they let you set up a station like this, this can be really, really valuable for you. All right, so first, show me just one really good single. So hollow hop in, and then uh, lever, tuck, flick. Good, all right, relax. Yes. All right, shake it out, show me one more time. Good, good. All right, so now I want you to try showing me, you said, what's your normal? Uh, well, I, before hopping in in a hollow, I could do one once in the blue moon. Literally. Okay, so this is good. Yeah, You've so made an improvement. Amazing, yeah. Fantastic, I didn't know, I didn't hear you ding yeah. the bell. <laughs> I, I, I remember there yet, but jumping in in a hollow has made all the difference. Awesome, that's, uh, that's yeah. great. That that's, yeah. it makes me really happy. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, on top of that, now let's see if we can try stringing two together, okay? So, show me what you what your best attempted two is. All right, good. Relax. Very, very close. Okay. So the one tip, and then I'll start moving around. Yep. Is so you get that first rep, okay, and then you're spending a little bit too much time there. So you're letting you're pulling up, you're letting your feet come, and then you're wasting a little bit of time. And because of that, when your feet's tucked, you start swinging forward and you get what's called like a Tarzan yeah, swing. Like so what I want you to do is touch. And then as soon as your feet are like literally about to touch, aggressively push your feet back into that arch position. Do you know what that is? That's where basically your feet are behind you. So I want you, rather than just letting your feet fall, I want you to push them back behind you. So if my hands were here, you're, you're touching and then you push your feet back. And what that does is that's gonna like, that's gonna pull you into your second kip a lot quicker, and I think it might make you feel a little bit more powerful. Good, push through. Good, okay. And then another thing I'm seeing is like, so when you, as soon as you touch, as soon as your feet touch, whether it's here or the bar or wherever, as soon as you touch, pull yourself back through. So right now you're kind of like, you touch and then you relax, but I need you to touch and pull yourself back into the kip position. And that, just that aggressive, like, you actually did a really good job where like, you touch and then you kick your feet back. When, 
when you figure out that timing there, it'll click and then this, it'll be easy. And you'll, you'll hit like five or six unbroken. Okay, so let's try it one more time. Apollo, touch, kip. Head through, head through, there you go. Head through, that was good. That was really good, right? And as, as your lats get stronger, that's gonna be a little bit easier. And then we'll be able to bump this up. And then eventually you'll be doing that on the bar, okay? Yeah. Hey, great job for first day at Toza Bar. Are you kidding me? Show me. All right, definitely the main thing that you need to work on is that, uh, that hop in, right? So it's actually the same thing that she was doing where you hopped in and you were behind the bar and then you're kind of like swinging a little bit and then you tried to do your kip. Okay. So what I want you to do is just like get, get, so stand yeah. Correct. So like put your hands up like right now. Yeah. So when you jump, when you jump up to touch this bar, right? See how your hands are behind the bar, right? That's good. If you want to have them grab the bar, you're going to put your hands forward, right? Yep. When you do that, I want you to also do that with your feet. Okay. So nope, not your butt. You're just your feet. So jump, when you jump up, feet forward okay. with your hands. And that's going to help you get that first swing. Cause every time you're jumping up and you're going, here, and then you're like swinging, and then you're trying to start the actual kip, right. but that's because your feet are staying behind your body. I need you to go hands forward, feet forward, so like that. So feet forward, hands forward, and then that's gonna help you get that first initial hollow hop in. Here you go. Okay. Jump a little bit higher if you can. Yes. Good, okay, and then, and then show me a couple kip swings. Right, so head through, feet back, head through, feet back, head through, feet back, there you go. Okay, so you feel that big swing? Yep. That's what I want you to try to get right off the bat. Okay. okay, so this time hop into a hollow, and then the first thing I want you to do is as soon as you grab the bar, drive your head through, so push your head this way as you pull your feet back, and you'll feel it'll start to, gravity will take over and you can't help but kip, okay? But remember, what's the first, what's the first step of the toes of bar? The lever, exactly, okay? So what happens when I push away, right? All of a sudden now, now if I'm truly staying neutral, my torso is back, this, like I'm trying to show you how like my chin angle isn't changing, but when I lever myself back, what happens with a lot of people is they keep their head here and they go, and it, and it totally kills, just like it killed for you, your range of motion. So here's all I want you to do. This time when you go for a toaster bar, like just to exaggerate it, look at the bar. Just look at the bar. That's all I want you to do. Look at the bar. Try to touch your toes of the bar. Don't worry about anything else to tell you. Just look at the bar and try to touch your toes of the bar. Look at your target. Be the bar. There you go. Here you go. Good. Okay. Got, you got your feet out to here. Okay. And actually, I'm really curious, without any swinging, okay, just like literally, I just want you to grab the bar. Strict. Just strict. I want you to, can you do that? Just strict. Show me. Look into the bar. Yeah, just look at the bar. Try to touch your toes to the bar. Don't do any swinging. Just very non crossfit -y. Just see how high you can get your feet. There you go, pretty close, okay? So if you, like just there strict, you got your feet to about right here, okay? If you're able to combine that with, with that lever position, right? What is it, where do your feet move, right? Without even like doing a better toes of bar, if you just lever your shoulders up and away, your feet are gonna end up about right here, right? So it's about combining what you just did, that tuck and flick, when you can combine that with that levered position, that's where the magic's made. All right. All right. Yeah, so, and so completely ignore everything I said about the squat rack. These are definitely the things to use. I had no idea you guys had these, because almost no one does. So same thing, I know this bar is really high. Don't worry about like doing it right from the first jump. Just hop up to the bar, get your position, do a couple swings, and then let's just try to get your toes to touch this. Step one, reach your bar. So. Head four feet back, good. Nice. There you go. Keep those legs extended. Good. Nice. That was that's the best set of kipping that you've done for sure. Okay. Good. So, 
as you get more comfortable with that, uh, having a coach who can just like kind of push your head through, push your head through, really, really gonna help. Relax those elbows a little bit, but from that compared to in the very beginning when you were, right? A huge improvement. And I know you've only been doing CrossFit for a couple months, right? Three months. So you have like, you have so much like more time to grow. Just simply getting comfortable with allowing your elbows to extend, swing back, swing forward. So head back, feet forward, head back, feet forward, or the opposite, feet back, head forward. So it's here and here, and you just string them together, that's it. And once you feel that momentum, you'll start to feel like, oh, this is giving me some lift. And then we'll be able to start practicing toes to bar. But I think this is the key for you to start, okay? okay? All right, good job. Thanks. Tuck those knees, good, tuck them up. All right, relax, one more thing. So. This might feel really weird for you, but when you're doing your toes of arm, so you're doing, you're doing this, okay? And you're trying to like touch the bar right here, right? And you're missing, the bar's here, and you're going like that. And then every once in a while you make that connection. But if I'm trying to touch the, a little bar on this little tiny surface area, and if I miss up or down, it's gonna miss completely, setting yourself up for failure. So if I just go like this, and I try to touch the bar on this giant pad I have, you have a much, much bigger room for air. So you're kind of going like this and you're flexing your toes and like, I can't even touch my toes there, right? Like I just missed it, like I finally hit it, okay? Point your toes or basically plantar flex your toes, like just flex your calves is all I want you to do and then try it. So I still want you to tuck and flick, but, but keep your toes up and all of a sudden it doesn't matter if you're here or here, or here, you're still gonna hit, okay? I think that might help you make more connections. So try that out really quick. I don't know you're, you're tired, but flex your calves. That's totally, I mean, I- Yeah, I mean, you hit those, you smash it, yeah. Totally, because like, so you can hit, the bar can hit here, 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 but if you have your feet like this, the bar can miss, this and then like it only there's a very very small window of, of error there okay okay that, i think that would be huge it would be for sure